<laughs> so Blender now has simulation nodes. I'm going to teach you how to use them, but make sure you have the new build of Blender. It's an experimental branch before you do it. And this video is sponsored by Squarespace. I'm going to talk about them more at the end of the video. Okay, simulation nodes. How do they work? Uh, what are they useful for, etc. Uh, go to geometry nodes and for an object, make a geo nodes group. And now we can start adding nodes. When we hit Shift A, you're now going to see there's a simulation prompt. We can have a simulation input and a simulation output. And you can see that it creates this kind of window where anything we put inside the window is part of this like block. And when you see simulation input and output, I just want you to think loop. Has not, nothing to do with simulation yet, um, but it's all about this idea of uh, we get an input, whatever is in this block we repeat over and over and over again um, for a certain condition. So what do, what do I mean? So let's say we take our cube, we put it into simulation input, and we transform just by a bit by 0.1 on the x-axis, and then we output. You can see this is now moving the cube because every frame, it's going to look at what's inside of this. It's going to add 0.1, okay? If I also do this, it's also going to rotate, okay? So it's taking this operation and looping it for every frame. So this is a loop node. Can you use it to make simulations? Sure. Um, but you can see that there's a bit more stuff going on. We know the delta time. This is the gap of time between each frame. Uh, or between each uh, calculation, uh, more specifically. We have how long is this elapsed, uh, which is similar to the time node, but maybe we haven't started the simulation at a certain point, and we have to stop. Um, so let's do this uh, simulation, right? But say we don't want it to go forever. Well, what we can do, and by the way, this is crashing a lot. It's very glitchy, right? It's a new feature. Um, so if a crash happens, it happens. But let's say we take the time and we say, uh, stop the simulation. So when this is equal to one, stop the simulation. If it's greater than two, what do we expect to happen? It's going to run the simulation and then ask, is the time greater than two? And only if it is, stop the simulation. Now you can do a similar thing with the elapsed, uh, but uh, I've gotten some crashes for it. Um, can we do something more interesting than a transform? Yes, we can do any operation that's inside of here. Some of these are going to crash Blender. So let's try and extrude. So on the first frame, it's going to extrude. On the second frame, it's going to extrude all of those faces and all of those faces and all of those faces. And you can see how very quickly uh, this will crash. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do extrude and I'm also going to do a scale elements by some amount and we can do the top and let's see what that looks like now we get this monstrosity where every frame we extrude and we scale down and this is a quick way uh, to make some interesting uh, fractals um, i believe we can also randomize i don't know if it randomizes per frame but we can check uh, so we want to randomize the top with a selection so i'm going to take this i'm going to multiply so this is just experimenting now um, maybe we want a boole boolean, so only some of them uh, do this. Let's see what this gives us. Yeah, there we go. So now only some of them are extruding. Uh, this is a thing, okay? <laughs> and just like that, uh, we get very close to crashing. We just got to 2.3 million polygons. So you could loop anything. Uh, another interesting use case that I've seen somebody use uh, that's pretty simple is let's take a cube, which is our input, and let's uh, give it a bunch of points. So I'm going to distribute points on faces or in volume, since that's a node now. Um, so now I want you to imagine, or I could just show you, uh, that there is a bunch of points in the volume, which isn't a thing yet. So mesh to volume. So our cube is volume, and then we distribute points inside of it. And what I want to do, and this is a weird glitch where it kind of saves the previous thing. I don't know if caching has anything to do with this. It doesn't seem to. Whatever, it's still glitchy. Uh, I want to take these points and move them over time. So I'm going to set position. I'm going to offset these by a noise. And let's see what this gives us. Whatever, it's still glitchy. I think a thing we can do to fix this is let's instance on points so we actually get some geometry and not just points maybe. Um, so I'm going to instance a sphere, make that very tiny. And now, oh, <laughs> now it's treating it as just a one thing. There we go. Now you can see our points have returned. Um, so I'm going to move these based on a noise and just subtract 0.5 from this. 
so that it stays centered. And now you can see we have kind of a diffusion type simulation. Let me bring down the scale and let me bring up the amount of points. And you can see we get this uh, interesting looking simulation. By the way, you're wondering why is it moving over time and then kind of converging to certain points. Uh, there's certain areas where the noise texture is going, going to be very equal uh, to zero. Um, and those are kind of like the sinks, if you think about it as differential equations, right? If it converges to a point where the noise is zero, we don't expect it to move. And we also have cycles and very interesting uh, things. Um, but you can do uh, cool looking simulations. Look at that. That, that. That's a thing. There isn't much to say about simulation nodes at the moment. It's a un or an unfinished loop. Uh, but I just wanted to say that it exists. So now, sponsor of the video. So this tutorial is sponsored by Squarespace, and if you do not know what Squarespace is, it is a service that lets you make websites very easily without any of the coding, without any of the nonsense. My website's made with it, and three features you might find super interesting about Squarespace is one, you get analytics right out of the box, so you get to know who's going to your website, demographic type information. Second of all, you get to embed stuff in your website, especially social links, so like Twitter, right? You can put it directly in your website and they don't need to go off of it uh, to see your Twitter feed. And thirdly, you get automatic image cropping and, uh, and basically the point is you get to move these blocks around and design your website without any of the hassle of coding. So if this sounds interesting to you, head over to Squarespace, use your free trial to design your website, and then when you're ready to take that thing live, you can use my link in the description to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain.